Hey, hey, Alexia. Hey, Foster. Would you consider yourself a capitalist or a socialist? Capitalist. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing I hate is just receiving a lot of advertisements that are not relevant to me. But we live in a capitalist society and doing ads is the only way that we can do podcasts. And we love doing podcasts. But we are so lucky, really so fortunate to have Cambly on our side. Sim, we were very, very lucky and we are very happy to do that because something that we believe in. Something. <laughs> you will get corrected even in advertisements. <laughs> But seriously, I have talked to a lot of people at Cambly. I've taken classes with them, pretending that I'm a Brazilian. Alexia is taking classes and it is outstanding. Uh -huh. So that's it. Go to Cambly. Use promo code English no Crew. You guys know this by now. Do it. Why haven't you done it yet? We can see who's doing it and not doing it. Do it. <laughs> Lembrando, não tem desculpas. Se você tem 15 minutos de livre no dia, vá lá e faça. Não tem desculpa. Cambly.com ou no aplicativo Cambly. 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 Go to Cambly.com and let's get on with the show. So, Seth, you said one thing that Brazil is a great place to visit and maybe a more difficult place to live. You are living in Brazil right now, correct? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm living part time. I, I'm sort of spending a lot of time here because of uh, a significant other. Uh, but I, I still live in New York, uh, but I do spend enough time here that it does weigh on me a little bit. Um, yeah, you know, the way things don't really work very well and the way things are frustrating and take a long time and are sort of incomprehensible and that there's the government is just wasting money left and right and the constant drumbeat of corruption and yeah. and uh, are you talking I, about I, Brazil I, or the US? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting. I mean, people here do somehow think that the United States is perfect. Uh, and that all laws are enforced and that justice works perfectly. And, of course, that's definitely not true. No, no, no. But it, it is a discernible difference. Yeah. Uh, even, even at its worst, uh, you know, even if you take something like police violence in the United States against people of color, you know, Brazil has that a hundred times worse. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's apples to oranges. I always say the same thing. I always say, like, if you're a gringo and you say you love Brazil, then you definitely have not lived in Brazil. You, you can love the people. You can love the music. You can love the food. But you, the country as a whole, every, you have to have mixed feelings about it, like you do about every country, because it's a complex place. And, uh, you know, you can't possibly love the efficiency of the government, for example. Yeah, just, I think it has to be a love-hate type of yeah. thing. And I think that's with every country in the world. Absolutely. That's a great point. If you're, if you're French and you move to the United States, there are things that drive you crazy and vice versa. It has nothing to do really with it being a, a richer or a poorer country or, or anything. It, it's, it's just a fact of... Countries are different, and moving from one to the other is always frustrating. And actually, that's what my channel is about. It, 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 if I had to sum up uh, Amigo Gringo in one phrase, it would be, uh, you know, cultural differences do not make you better or worse. They're just different. Don't, you, know, you shouldn't criticize another culture for being different. You need to understand why they're different. Preach. That's awesome. I think that was yes. two sentences, by the way, but you know that. Yeah, it could be a long, fragmented sentence, but it, you got across your point very well. Yeah. So are you in Sao Paulo right now, sir? I am in Cuiabá, right? Mato Grosso. Awesome. It's a little bit, quote unquote, off the beaten path. Yeah. Um, well, if you want to come to the Pantanal, which uh, everybody should visit, you either have to come through here or through Campo Grande in, Rio Gra in uh, Mato Grosso do Sur, so... Yeah, it's a little, but I will say it's a bit off the beaten path. The the farofa, <laughs> the farofa is very good here because they make it with uh, plantains, or they mm. call them here bananas, bananas of the earth. Yeah, bananas da terra. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm a huge plantain fan. I can't express Me too. how much I love plantains, and because uh, I worked with people from the Caribbean for many, for many years in New York, and in New York, where are you, by the way? Where am I talking to? I am currently in South Carolina, actually, for the first time in a while. Well, it's uh, plantains are everywhere in New York because Jamaicans and Cubans and Dominicans and 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 so it's a part of the New York life. And then you go to Brazil and. Most places don't use them. I know in Salvador they do and in, in Mato Grosso, but a lot of places it's very hard to find a banana da terra. It's just there's a million kinds of bananas, like more kinds mm-hmm. than you ever would ever see in the U.S., but not the bananas da terra. Yeah, no, that's a great point. For Americans, it's just bananas <laughs> in well, general. You know, and it's because, it's because of, uh, this, I mean, everyone should look up you know, why Americans only have one kind of banana, you know, it's all because of this great effort in, I don't know when, beginning of the 20th century, the 19th century, to make a banana that could be imported from Central America. Yeah, United, United Fruit. States and, and last longer, you know, right? So, and most people think yeah. a Banana Republic is a clothing store, but it's really what they used to call the countries that exported bananas. <sighs> To the United States, yeah, I know you yeah. know that. I'm just, uh, I know that. No, my mom tried to take me to a banana republic the other day, <laughs> and I refused. <laughs> yeah, cool. So, Seth, you have a new book coming out that I'm extremely interested in called yeah. "Rediscovering Travel: yeah. A Guide for the Globally Curious." Yeah, uh, yeah. You gonna talk about it? A little yeah. Bit? Well, um, you know, it's I for five years was a full-time travel writer for the New York Times. And and you think maybe that being a travel writer just means going on vacation for five years. But it's actually, you follow the travel industry. You see, and more than that, you watch travelers. You watch tourists. And most travelers get to travel like two weeks a year, one month a year, if they're lucky. Uh, and, and they make yeah. a lot of weird mistakes that are, that are, and and if but if you watch them for five years, you begin to see patterns, you know, like being too dependent on TripAdvisor, for example, and 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 even or, or even using TripAdvisor in the wrong way. There's some very good ways to to use it. Uh, also, how people measure risk, like how dangerous traveling is, and most people yeah. think that they should be scared of terrorism, but really. Far more travelers die in car crashes than get killed by terrorists. So th- yeah. there's all talk about traveling in Brazil. Oh, tra- car Brazilians drive like crazy people, right? And not yeah. only that, but but the uh, inspections of cars. I don't know actually how they are in Brazil, but you know the most dangerous thing about driving in most places is that the truck that's driving next to you hasn't had its brakes checked ever. Yeah. You know? So that's so it's like that. It's it's full of stories about the way the I don't just say those things. I, I, I tell stories about the way uh, things, uh, got, uh, you know, how things how I learned those things. Uh, there's a few stories in there about how, how I I just got sick of like using guidebooks and TripAdvisor and everything. Everything in the world is so well documented. It's all online that I got sick of not discovering things anymore. It seemed like everywhere I went, I had already read about exactly what was going to happen. Yeah, it's impossible to be surprised nowadays or delighted. So, yeah. so you go to a, you're walking down the street and you see a restaurant and you're like, huh, let me look that up on TripAdvisor and, or, and see if it's good. And then you read everything about, you know, you read five reviews and you already know everything about it. To me, just walk, just walk in, take a chance. You know, oh, the restaurant is full of people speaking Italian. Probably pretty good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah. That's what it's about. It's available, by the way. It's not published yet, but you can pre-order it on Amazon. Just look up "Rediscovering Travel." Yes, we will put all the links in the show notes. Everyone should buy Seth's book and just start reading more in general. So, Seth, after you wrote this book, are you optimistic or hopeful about the future of travel? Because 
on one hand, I'm really like excited about the availability of travel for more people. And on the other hand, I'm just kind of worried that it's moving in the wrong direction in a lot of ways. Well, I mean, I, I think I agree with exactly what you're saying. It, the, right now, if you go back 50 years, you know, very, very, very few people traveled internationally. Uh, so the power of travel and going, just going to another country and just realizing what it means to be in another country, we were talking about this before, really does yeah. open your eyes to what it, if I'm American and I go to France for the first time or to Brazil, I don't only learn about France or Brazil, but I learn a lot about the United States. You know, oh, Absolutely. I never realized we spoke really loudly and wore really ugly shorts. You know, that's <laughs> and and um, so in that sense, it's very positive. It's, you know, the Chinese are traveling a lot these days. Uh, the Brazilians for a while there, uh, you know, even middle class Brazilians were coming coming to the United States or even going to Europe. So that has yeah, to yeah. be very positive. And honestly, there have always been travelers who just follow tour guides around, you know, and, and that's just that's basically the same thing as following TripAdvisor around that. I, 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 and so so I, it's funny. I always tell people, like, if you just use TripAdvisor to figure out where you're going all the time you might as well just hire a human guide to take you around. You know, it's, you're not being adventurous, really. In any case, uh, but you're right. People are, are being yeah. less adventurous, but not everybody. You know, there's a lot of really good travelers out there. And I think that uh, there's, you know, a bit of a, a, a backlash these days. That's a good word for your, for your Brazilian listeners to learn. Backlash. Yes, I have no a, idea a backlash. what that is in Portuguese or if it exists. Uh... Yeah, I can't do that translation off the top of my head. Uh, but a backlash is something where people are kind of revolting against or responding against a negative trend, perhaps. Right, or or maybe it's something that was seemed like a positive trend, but then it went so far that they revolt they revolt against it. But I mean, it's a yeah. lot of people who who now are seeking out experiences like homestays. You know, when you go live with a family. Or even even something like Airbnb, which is a company that I, I do not like. Uh, I did a video on this on Globally Curious. There, there's a good part of Airbnb, and that's when you stay with a real person who lives in a real place. Now, most of Airbnb is not necessarily that, but yeah. that's a tool. Some of these tools for traveling are really, really great. Actually, even something like Uber is kind of, uh, which another company, which I dislike, but I have to admit, <laughs> my cousin, I have an older cousin who's, who's visiting Rio, even as we speak. And, uh, I was worried about her. She doesn't speak any Portuguese. She's smart and she's traveled a lot in her life, but Brazil is tough. And, and, uh, how do you get around? Am I going to, would I recommend she walk everywhere? Well, in Rio, I would not. Would I recommend she take the bus everywhere in Rio? No, would I recommend she take no. taxis in Rio? You know, there's so many taxi drivers that even if they're honest, they don't speak English. But look at yeah. Uber. For Uber, you just put in the, the address where you're going. You find the guy comes and he takes you to that address. And you can try to chat with him, but you don't even need to speak the language. So, so that's a great tool to make people more willing to explore, uh, even though the, the people who run Uber are a bunch of capitalist scumbags but you know that's yeah there. feel free to curse on this yeah they're assholes <laughs> um, <laughs> but but you know you have to uh, I, I i believe you know i'm i wish i were you know a, a cool enough guy that I, I would just boycott every company that does every anything bad but i'd be living you know on a farm somewhere and i couldn't even grow anything yeah. on my farm because i wouldn't be <laughs> yeah i mean that's a big thing that all of these technologies are kind of a double-edged sword if you will that i mean i mean they're all powerful tools but they can be used for good or it bad just, it really just bothers me and, and i guess i i never realized this before and it's been going on my whole life but you know once the company gets to a certain size and begins to think about you know going public and selling to investors or even before that they're looking for a billion dollars investment well they have to 
there's one thing they have to prove that they can grow and make money. And they can't do that without really trying to make money. Yeah. Seth, I know you're a very, very busy man, but I just wanted to ask you, Seth, do you have time for a quick lightning round? Sure. Okay. I'm making these up off the top of my head, yeah. so they might be terrible. Uh, Farofa. Favorite food. Farofa. Awesome. Wait, was that the question? Favorite food in Brazil. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was. I think you got it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If you just want to say things without me asking the question, that might sure. even be better. Sure. <laughs> um, or I'm a. That's the answer <laughs> to where was a picture of your family stolen and posted on a billboard? Wow. Someone took a picture, what? a Thanksgiving portrait of my family, my parents, my brother, and made it into a billboard ad in Boa Vista, Horaima. Wow. That's insane. Anyway, next question. I'll actually listen this time. <laughs> um, how about favorite borough in New York? Oh, I mean, uh, well, that's actually... I, I, ha I, I live in Queens, you know, and I, mm -hmm. I do believe, having lived in New York on and off for twenty more than 20 years, Queens and the Bronx are the two place boroughs of New York that still retain some of the real international immigrant, hardworking street life atmosphere of New York when I arrived in the 1990s. Uh, Brooklyn and Manhattan are fantastic. There's so much there and there's so much to do and actually the best restaurants are there. But they do, you know, because of gentrification and because of a lot of uh, uh, just how difficult it is to make money and, and how high the rents are, you know, it's become kind of a little bit like one big shopping, you know. Uh, yeah, kind of they've changed. And there's still oh, yeah. so many neighborhoods in, the, in, in Queens and the Bronx that are just like regular neighborhoods with regular people, except that they're from a ton of different countries. So, but I'm generalizing, you know, parts of Manhattan and parts of Brooklyn are like that. Of course. Yeah. Where do you live in, in Queens? Jackson Heights? Yes. Jackson Heights, which, uh, is the ultimate diverse neighborhood. Uh, it's, uh, many, uh, Colombians and Peruvians and Mexicans, many Indians and Pakistanis, many, uh, Thai and Asian people. I like to amaze people by saying that my subway stop uh, in Queens is within three blocks of 14 Tibetan restaurants. Chibetano, okay? Restaurante Chibetano. Mm -hmm. That's just amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, I've heard several people say that Jackson Heights is like per capita the most diverse place in the world. I don't know how that's measured. Well, that sounds good. I mean, it's. It, I, I think that. In the United States, there's very few places like it. I think there probably are a few neighborhoods like that. But because New York is so densely populated, you can have many, many groups living near each other. So we have a big Colombian community and a big Bangladeshi community, and they're all like in the same few blocks. Uh, so that's one thing. The other thing is, where is there a more diverse place in the world? So if it's the most diverse neighborhood in the U.S., then it's probably, unless there's some place in London. I mean, it's got to be up there. It's got to be up there. It's really great. And it's it's in it's even in guidebooks these days. I mean, it's like page 290 or something. <laughs> but uh, uh, taking a walking tour, like well, just walking around Jackson Heights is amazing. By the way, you personally, not your listeners, are invited on a tour of Jackson Heights if you come to New York. I give a very good tour. Awesome. But I have Thank video. You. I have a video about Jackson Heights also on Amigo Gringo. So. That was not a speed round, but, you know. No, but that was very informative. So how about, what is one city, let's say, favorite city in Brazil, barring any big cities? So yeah. a city that someone's not imagining. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't, well, maybe not a city, but it's kind of just like any little city in the interior of Minas Gerais is good for me. Agreed. Yeah. Totally. I have an activity that I do there where I, uh, at just a random time, I just say, I'm going to find the guy who sells homemade cachaça to the rest of the town. Because <laughs> there's always a guy or a family. And you just ask around. <laughs> and you don't have to ask too many people. And then you find out where this family's house is. And you go there. And you're just like, hey, do you have any cachaça to buy? 
And I've done it only like I've done it three times in my life, but it it's it's always been a fun adventure, and I've always ended up with cachaça, which I'm I'm sure <laughs> is illegally legal to sell, but you know. No, that's a great activity. Got to do that one day. Yeah. Yeah, I say let's. I was gonna try to give you some controversial lightning round questions, but I won't force you to do that. So, sure, whatever. Seth, where can people? Where can people find you? Uh, where can people learn more about your channel, your book, anything you want? Uh, you uh, Amigo Gringo is the channel. You just put it into YouTube and it'll come right out. Uh, the English language channel is called Globally Curious, Global Menchi Curioso in Portuguese. Instagram, there's Seu Amigo Gringo, that's in Portuguese, and Seth Kugel. S e a t h k u g e l. That's my sechi ku gel. Yeah, it's ku <laughs> gel, which is a little bit sort of dirty if you think about it. It's, that could be a little sensual, yeah. Yeah, and uh, that's my. You know, if you put in amigo gringo, you'll you'll find stuff everywhere. But but either my name or amigo gringo, Twitter, Seth Kugel. You know, I'm everywhere that you might expect either under Seth Kugel or amigo gringo. The book you can find, uh, you know, on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or whatever site sells American books. Again, just put in my name or rediscovering travel and it will be out in October. And I'm hoping there'll be a, a Brazilian edition. Absolutely. Yes. Everyone read Seth's book, read more. It's good for practicing your English and learning how to travel. So thanks a lot, Seth. Anything else you want to add? Any ask from our followers? Any recommendations, words of wisdom? Uh, no, just uh, uh, check us out and uh, learn some English and find out that Americans are not as bad as, as you think we are. No, some of us are pretty cool. Yeah, some, Most of us, some in of fact. Us, some of us are. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Seth. All right, thanks. Bye-bye. Hey guys, if you are still listening to the show, first, congratulations. That means that you are serious about improving your English. And if you're really serious and dedicated about your English, then you need to check out our completely new version of Sound School. It is a totally personalized pronunciation and speaking course that we have literally been working on for years. We are opening up the course on September 12th, and there are only 50 spots available because we work with everyone personally. If you like this show, Sound School will be perfect for you. É exatamente isso que o Foster falou. Vamos abrir as inscrições para o nosso curso Sound School no dia 12 de setembro, e é para quem quer levar a sério a pronúncia Eu Speaking. Mas como as vagas são limitadas, tem que correr. A gente trabalha com cada aluno pessoalmente e isso demanda muito da nossa atenção, tempo, dedicação, enfim. E é claro que a gente quer que vocês tenham a melhor experiência possível. É só entrar no nosso site www.inglesionicro.com e se inscrever tanto para receber as novidades quanto para saber mais sobre o curso e não perder essa super chance de fazer parte da família Inglês no Icru. Espero te ver por lá. And as always, keep up the good fight and lose well.